so hello friends so today i will uh, discuss uh, with the losses in three phase induction motor and uh, for exam point of view uh, this lecture is very important because we'll be covering the losses in variable uh, various losses in the three phase induction motor as well as the power stages in induction motor and the relationship between the um, three powers you can say input power to the rotor then the losses in rotor and the output power of the rotor so these relations uh, will be very important to solve the numericals okay so Uh, let us start with the losses um, in uh, three phase induction motor you can say there are two types of uh, losses one is the constant loss and another is the variable loss constant losses will remain constant throughout whereas variable losses they are changing with some parameters so as Uh, one of the major parameter is the load if load is changing then the losses will change so that is the variable uh, that will come under uh, variable losses heading and uh, another uh, losses is the constant losses which will be constant throughout okay though there will be a slight fluctuations in that or slight variations in that uh, those will be treated as a constant losses uh just like uh, um, these constant losses are of uh, two types again core loss or iron loss and another is the mechanical loss and mechanical losses they are uh, um, usually uh, the frictional and windage losses so um, if uh, uh, friction it depends on the uh, speed if uh, speed variation is there then uh, that frictional loss may be uh different or if the uh, rate of uh, wind flow that is uh, variable then these mechanical losses will be uh, slight uh, variable but um, that variation is very small and that's why usually we will treat all these losses in under the constant losses heading so generally these losses are broadly classified in uh, two categories as uh, Uh, constant loss and another is the variable loss okay now these uh, constant losses uh, they are uh, the core loss or iron loss and the mechanical loss now these core loss or iron losses they are usually classified as the ed current loss and hysteresis loss these ed current losses we can reduce by uh, special type of uh, construction as we have already seen that is the laminated core if we are laminated uh, stampings we are using and if we are uh, these stampings we are laminating then we can reduce the ed current loss so this we have already seen uh, while uh, learning the construction so during that uh, construction of uh, induction motor at that, that time i have uh, told you that ed current losses will be uh, eliminated or uh, uh, removed by using um, not eliminated 100% but we can reduce these ed current losses by laminating the core so we are using uh, the circular type of uh, lamination uh, stampings and those stampings we are laminating so that these ed current losses will be re reduced in uh, that okay and hysteresis losses we can uh, um, uh, reduce these hysteresis losses by using the uh, material of high grade steel uh, silicon steel and that uh, i have told you uh, while construction now usually these uh, um, core losses or iron losses they are proportional to the frequency now since these uh, losses are um, proportional to frequency and uh, these core or iron losses are uh, 
uh, both uh, resulting in uh, both uh, stator as well as the rotor now as we know that the um, uh, frequency um, um, 50 hertz frequency we supply we are applying it to the stator winding okay so the um, as per indian standard this frequency is constant and is equal to 50 hertz so if this 50 hertz uh, frequency we are applying it to the stator then the um, stator losses will be dominant one so that is ed current and hysteresis losses both the losses are uh, dominant in uh, stator and that's why um, in stator construction in order to reduce these stator core or iron losses we have seen that uh, to reduce the uh, ed current loss and to reduce the hysteresis loss we have used the uh, material of um, stator core, uh, stator um, of the high silicon uh, steel high grade silicon steel and we have used the laminated uh, stampings of that um, uh, stator uh, um, uh, winding or um, uh, stator uh, okay so uh, this is for uh, uh, reducing the stator losses now in case of rotor we know that the uh, frequency of uh, rotor uh, induced uh, emf in the rotor that is slip times the frequency and uh, uh, that is um, s into f and we know that under running condition the value of slip is uh, very small very very small it is equal to 1 to 5% that's why this frequency will be very very small that we have already seen so fr is the frequency of the um, uh, rotor uh, or e2r is the frequency of the uh, magnitude of the um, uh, rotor induced emf and uh, i2r is the rotor current which is induced in the rotor and uh, the frequency it is s times f okay so as s value is very small the um, uh, frequency um, term in this uh, rotor part will be very very negligible and that's why the core or iron losses in rotor are negligible okay and these iron or core losses they are dominant in case of the stator okay that's why the stators we are uh, making um, by taking care that it is uh, of laminated core and uh, uh, made up of high grade silicon steel so that those losses will be reduced further okay so this is all about this uh, core loss or iron loss another loss in uh, constant losses uh, they are classified uh, as the mechanical losses which are further uh, classified as frictional loss and windage loss these frictional losses they are uh, usually proportional to speed because the friction will be proportional to the speed if uh, there is a variation in speed then uh, these frictional losses may be uh, reduced but uh, or changed but uh, usually this variation in speed is very very small that's why these losses are also uh, referred as constant losses so mechanical losses are further classified as frictional losses or windage losses uh, and windage losses and those are uh, some what negligible but they are the uh, losses taking care uh, taking place that's why we have to take care of these losses also so these are the constant losses and variable losses they are the copper losses Uh, so copper loss uh, means uh, um, it is uh, usually um, i square r loss okay so as there are three uh, phase windings we are using uh, three windings or uh, in three phase motor we are using three phase of winding that's why this loss is equal to three times i square r okay so it is i square r loss and uh, um, it is three times Uh, i2 r square 
um, into R2. Now, uh, these losses, why they are uh, referred as variable losses? Because these, uh, um, this current is proportional to the load. If we are changing the value of load, then the value of current will change. That means current value is proportional to load. And if we are varying the load, then this value of current is changing. That means this I square R loss will change. And that's why uh, they are coming under the variable loss uh, category. Okay. And um, these uh, uh, losses, usually uh, these uh, copper losses uh, are in stator and rotor winding due to the current flowing through uh, uh, the winding. As the current changes uh, with uh, load, these losses are said to be variable losses. Okay. Then generally, the stator iron losses are combined with the stator copper losses. So stator iron losses and stator copper losses, they are combined together at a particular load to specify the total stator losses at particular load condition. Okay. And these uh, rotor copper losses, as um, we know, it is referred as three times I to R square into R2. So um, for rotor, they are analyzed uh, separately. Okay. Where I to R is the uh, rotor current per phase at particular load and uh, its value you can find it out uh, as we have already seen that I to R, it is equal to E to R upon Z to R and E to R under running condition, it is S times E2 and Z2R under running condition, its magnitude is given as under root of R2 square plus SX2 whole square. Okay. So from this, we can uh, find out value of I2R and uh, R2, you know, it is the um, uh, resistance of the uh, rotor uh, side. Okay. So, um, if R2 and I2R, uh, you will calculate, you can calculate the value of uh, the copper loss. Okay. And three times that will be the copper loss as usually three phase uh, windings we are using. Okay. So, this is all about the losses. I will revise it once uh, fast so that you can brush up. Uh, losses, usually they are of, uh, classified in two categories. One is the constant loss and another is the variable loss. The term constant loss, which will remain constant throughout and variable loss will be a variable one, which will depend on the value of load. Because as load changes, as these variable losses are uh, coming only under one category, that are, they are the copper losses. And copper losses, they are usually expressed in terms of I square R loss. And as the value of I or current, it is proportional to the load. That is, as load is changing, the value of current will change. And as current is changing, this value of I square R or the copper loss will change. That's why the term variable loss. Okay. And in constant losses, two categories are there. One is core or iron loss and another is the mechanical loss. Now, this core or iron losses, they are further classified as the ED current loss and hysteresis loss. These Both these losses or this iron or core losses, they are taking place in both stator as well as rotor. But uh, these losses are proportional to frequency and as the frequency of stator applied uh, EMF of the stator is high, they are dominant in stator winding, whereas these losses are very, very small or negligible in case of rotor because the rotor frequency or the uh, induced EMF in the rotor is having the frequency equal to S times F. And under running condition, we know that value of S is very, very small, which is equal to 1 to 5%. That's why as the frequency is very, very less, 
the rotor law, copper loss uh, rotor core loss or iron losses are negligible and these losses are only dominant in the stator and uh, they are categorized in two parts decurrent loss and hysteresis loss and in order to reduce this in stator we are uh, making them uh, stator windings as laminated core and uh, the cores of high grade silicon steel okay so this is all about the losses now next uh, we'll see the power stages what do you mean by power stages this induction motor converts an electrical power supplied to it into the mechanical power okay the electrical power we are supplying it as the input and the power uh, available at the load is the output power which is the mechanical power okay so um, this um this um, power you can say uh, this induction motor is converting uh, input electrical power into the mechanical one okay so now uh, these stages how this electrical power net electrical power inputted is converted into mechanical power so there are various stages in between these because as we have already seen the losses are there and in every system whatever input we are applying to that system will not be 100% be converted as the output because there are certain losses taking place in between okay now these losses there are number of stages and as per these uh, stages losses will be distributed amongst the stages and that's why uh, this is referred as the power stages so net electrical input we are applying it to the motor is the three phase supply voltage this p in is the supply power which we are applying it to the stator now this stator winding will have its own losses referred as stator losses so we'll have to subtract this uh stator losses from this input power so these stator losses we have already seen they are of two types one is the core loss or iron loss and another is the copper loss in stator both the losses are present so these two losses you have to subtract from this input power and the net power uh, will be the output of this stator and this output of stator is nothing but the rotating magnetic field now this rmf will interact with the rotor and that stator output let us say it is p2 and that is same as that of the input to the rotor so output of the stator winding we are inputting it as the input to the rotor winding okay so that is the p2 so p2 and p in we can relate by subtracting this stator losses so p2 is equal to p in minus stator losses will be p2 now this p2 is applied as the input to this rotor from this rotor again rotor copper losses you have to subtract because uh, again um, for rotor there won't be core losses or iron losses as i have already told you the um, on previous slide itself that the core losses uh, or the iron losses they are proportional to frequency and the frequency uh, of the uh, rotor winding uh, the emf induced in the rotor winding it is s times f that's why these core losses are neglected for rotor and that's why only copper losses will be present in the rotor so these copper losses you have to subtract from this p2 so that you will get the gross mechanical power develop so rotor losses uh, uh, rotor iron losses are neglected so after neglecting this 
rotor copper losses will be present and these copper losses of rotor you have to subtract from this p2 so p2 minus pc will be the pm now this gross mechanical power develop will be applied to the shaft or the load and that shaft before means uh, while rotating that uh, useful power of shaft that will be um, uh, related by subtracting the mechanical losses so me uh, gross mechanical power develop from that you have to subtract the mechanical losses which are the frictional and windage losses this you have to subtract and then you will get the p out or the useful power um, applied to the shaft okay or shaft power and it is usually referred as p out and uh, it is referred in the um, horse power or hp rating of the motor so we are applying input power as p in whereas we are getting the output power as p out and in between these losses will take place and these we have to take care now the net electrical input which will be applying it is equal to the three phase supply and as we know the three phase supply supply voltage is vl that is line voltage il is the uh, line current drawn by that um, stator winding and power factor is cos phi then p in it is equal to root 3 times vl il cos phi whereas p in is the net input electrical power vl is the line voltage value of the line voltage which is applied uh, to the uh, stator winding and il is the supply current drawn by that stator winding and cos of phi is the power factor of that motor okay then this p in it is given as root 3 times vl il cos phi so you have to remember this equation for solving the numericals p in is equal to root 3 vl il cos of phi now from this we have to subtract the core uh, stator losses so to get the p2 so what are the stator losses stator losses are both core or iron loss and copper loss so these both these losses you have to subtract from p in to get the p2 or the output of stator so p2 and p in they are related by this stator loss as p2 is equal to p in minus stator losses okay so you have to remember this also then further the copper loss because p2 and pm they are related with this pc as pm is equal to p2 minus pc p2 is input to the rotor the losses taking place in rotor they are the rotor copper losses and as copper loss you know it is the i square r loss so it is i2 square uh, i2 r square into r2 and we are winding it for three phase that's why pc will be equal to 3 times i2 r square into r2 so you have to remember this formula also for calculate calculation of this rotor copper loss then in order to find pm it will be p2 minus pc equal to pm so pm is equal to p2 minus pc so this also you have to uh, remember and mechanical losses they are usually mentioned so directly p out is equal to pm minus mechanical losses so mechanical losses and stator losses they are usually mentioned in the numerical so no need to calculate uh, directly you have to use the relations okay and only the loss which you have to calculate is the pc so pc you can calculate using this relation p in you can calculate using this relation and uh, then p in minus uh, stator uh, losses will be p2 and p2 minus pc will be pm and pm 
minus mechanical losses will be p out now why we are calculating all these so uh, at the end we want to find the efficiency so if you uh, you know the term efficiency efficiency is nothing but output upon input so if you want to calculate the overall efficiency of the motor then that overall efficiency of the motor you can calculate it by taking the ratio of p out to p in so p out upon p in will be the overall efficiency of the motor and usually it is referred in uh, percentage so uh, p out upon p in into 100 will be uh, your uh, net efficiency of the motor if you want to find efficiency of the rotor then ro output of rotor is pm and our input of rotor is p2 so pm upon p2 into 100 will be your rotor efficiency in percentage okay so these two efficiencies uh, you have to calculate from the power diagram it is rotor efficiency rotor output upon rotor input that is pm upon p2 and net motor efficiency it is p out upon p in and both you can express in terms of percentage okay so i hope you have understood all these uh, power stages now after uh, finding this uh, um, understanding this power stages um, you have to um, uh, keep the, in mind the relation between p2 pc and pm what is p2 pc and pm they are the uh, connected to the rotor p2 is the input to the rotor pc is the losses in uh, um, uh, rotor that is rotor copper losses and output of rotor is pm so how this p2 pc and pm they are related to each other so if you will understand this uh, relation uh, and uh, remember try to remember the relation between these two uh, three quantities p2 as to pc as to pm uh, it is equal to uh, 1 is to s is to 1 minus s so if you will able to remember this will be able to solve all the problems or the numericals okay so um, uh, very fast we'll try to cover this uh, in today's lecture so um, we know that the rotor input p2 the rotor copper loss pc and the gross mechanical power developed pm they are related through the slip now we want to derive this uh, relation Uh, uh, how it is related to the slip now we know that the uh, relation between torque torque let us say t is the gross torque developed by the motor in newton meter p is the power of that um, 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 power uh, developed in the motor and um, omega is the angular speed and omega uh, angular speed it is uh, usually omega is you know 2 pi f that is 2 pi n by 60 where n is the speed in rpm okay so uh, how these three quantities are related together we know that power is equal to t into omega that is the developed power it is equal to torque times angular speed okay this is the general relation and this general relation will try to find out uh, how to find p2 from this general relation pc from this uh, general relation and then pm from this general relation so if we will find p2 and pm then from that we can find the pc because um, pc uh, uh, pm is equal to p2 minus pc okay now we know that this p2 it is uh the uh, um, input to the rotor and input to the rotor is nothing but the rmf that is output of the stator it is related by rmf uh, rotating magnetic field with rotor okay so that p2 we know that p2 will be definitely related with torque as p2 is equal to torque into omega s that is as this omega s is nothing but your 
uh, 2 pi ns by 60 that means as we know this uh, uh, output of the stator which is rmf which is rotating at synchronous speed that's why this p2 is related with omega s with torque so p2 is equal to torque into omega s and omega s is 2 pi ns by 60 radians per second okay so that's why p2 is equal to torque into 2 pi ns by 60 let us say this is where ns is in rpm say so this is equation number 1 okay and we know that this uh, pm that is the output uh, gross uh, mechanical power output mechanical power which is equal to torque into omega because on the output side the rotor tries to deliver this torque to the load so rotor output is the gross mechanical power developed pm and torque t but rotor never uh, um, but rotor gives the output at speed n that we know and not at ns because the um, um, the entire principle of this three phase induction motor is n cannot be ns or the output of uh, rotor or the rotor speed Uh, synchronous speed never runs uh, the sorry induction motor never runs with the synchronous speed so output of the rotor it is definitely related by n that is the actual speed so that we know that's why pm is equal to torque into omega where this omega is equal to 2 pi n upon 60 right so pm is equal to t into 2 pi n upon 60 say so this is equation number 2 You, I think you got this difference between these two equations, one and two, because P two is um, from the stator side, output of stator, which is re, um, uh, related to the synchronous speed, and P M is the output of rotor, which is related to the actual speed, and actual speed is never be a synchronous speed. Okay, that's why P two is related with synchronous speed, and P M is related with this actual speed uh, now p2 minus pm is the pc so third equation will get it as uh, from this pc equal to p2 minus pm so we'll get this equation 1 minus equation 2 will give you pc and it is equal to 2 uh, sorry t into 2 pi by 60 into ns minus n that is say this is the rotor copper loss that is pc say equation number 3 now we got these equations 1 2 and 3 now we can take ratio of this three right so first take ratio of equation number 3 and equation number 1 so if we'll take pc upon p2 then pc upon p2 will be t into 2 pi by 60 into ns minus n upon t into 2 pi ns by 60 so tt 2 pi 2 pi and 60 60 will get cancel so only terms remaining will be pc by p2 that is equal to ns minus n upon ns and we know that ns minus n upon ns is nothing but the slip so pc upon p2 it is equal to slip s okay so this relation we got so from this we can say pc is equal to s times p2 that is the rotor copper loss we can find it out if p2 or the rotor input power is known to you or slip and slip is known to you so pc is equal to p2 times s or the total rotor copper loss is slip times the rotor input okay so pc is equal to slip times rotor input now we know that p2 minus pc is equal to pm substitute the value of pc from this pc is equal to p2 into s so p2 minus s into p2 is equal to pm take out p2 common so it will be 1 minus s into p2 is equal to pm so that means if we will multiply 
this P2 by 1 minus S will get Pm. So thus the gross mechanical power developed is 1 minus S times the rotor input. So the relationship we can write it as P2 S to PC S to PM is equal to 1 S to S S to 1 minus S. Okay. So now we can take a ratio of any of these two and we can get uh, on this side also ratio of any of these two. So P2 by PC, if you want to find P2 divided by PC, it will be 1 divided by S. If you want to find PC upon PM, it will be S divided by 1 minus S. If you want to find P2 upon PM, it will be 1 divided by 1 minus S. Or you can find any ratio. It is P2 S to PC S to PM. It is equal to 1 S to S S to 1 minus S. So you can take any of these two ratio and similarly any of the two ratio, similar ratios on this side. So try to remember this relation which is very important. P2 S to PC S to PM. It is equal to 1 S to S S to 1 minus S. And I don't think you need to remember uh, all this because P2, PC and PM, these terms, you can say, these are this P2, PC and PM. It is 1 S to S, S to 1 minus S. That's all. So, uh, I hope you have understood uh, this uh, today's uh, session. Uh, you have understood uh, all these uh, 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 power uh, losses uh, and uh, power stages and then uh, the relationship between these. So in tomorrow's class, we'll try to solve the numericals based on this. I'll just uh, briefly uh, revise uh, two, three minutes are there. Uh, so we'll, I'll briefly revise this thing and then uh, wind up the lecture. So the losses, total losses in induction motor, they are classified in two ways, constant losses and variable losses. So constant losses are nothing but iron or core losses, which are proportional to the frequency. And uh, these are available in stator and uh, rotor. But in stator winding, they are the dominant one because the frequency is the directly uh, applied supply frequency. And in rotor, these losses are very less or you can neglect them. So because this is uh, uh, the rotor frequency is S times F. That's why these core or iron losses are dominant in stator. And uh, they are, uh, you can say, neglect, negligible in rotor. And mechanical losses, they are frictional and windage losses. Uh, core or iron losses, further you can classify them in ED current and hysteresis losses. ED current losses, you can uh, reduce them by laminating uh, type of cores using lim laminating uh, type of cores and hysteresis losses you can uh, minimize by using high grade silicon steel material. Then mechanical losses, they are constant losses uh, classified in further as frictional and windage losses and uh, further the variable losses, they are uh, only loss is the copper loss and that copper loss is nothing but the I square R loss and that why we are calling we are calling it as a variable loss because uh, this current will vary with load because current is proportional to load. If load is varying then current will vary and this I square R loss will vary and usually we are using three phase windings that's why this copper loss is three times I square R and I is nothing but your I to R square. Okay, so I to R you can calculate from uh, E to R divided by Z to R and uh, uh, E to R is nothing but S times E to and Z to R magnitude you can find it from uh, under root of R to square plus S X to square. Okay, then uh, we have seen these power stages, uh, net electrical input P in, it is equal to root 3 VL IL cos phi, where VL IL, they are the input line voltages and currents, and cos phi is the power factor. Then you have to subtract the stator copper loss, 
and uh, core loss that is the whole entire as a stator loss from this p in to get the p2 and then from this p2 you have to subtract pc which is 3 i2r square into r2 so you will get the pm and uh, pm is equal to p2 minus pc and then after this you have to subtract the mechanical losses from this uh, mechanical gross mechanical power to get the net output power this net output power usually it is uh, mentioned in horsepower and uh, this uh, uh, we are finding all these to find the uh, efficiency of the either overall efficiency of the motor which is p out and related to p out and p in and the uh, um, rotor efficiency it is related to p2 and pm and this uh, relations you know efficiency is output upon input so overall efficiency is p out upon p in whereas the rotor efficiency is pm upon p2 so these efficiencies you can calculate and then the relation between p2 as to pc as to pm which we have found out from the this basic relation uh, of power relating to torque and omega as p is equal to torque into omega and we know that this omega it is nothing but 2 pi n by 60 and this n is for p2 as it is for stator side it is related to the synchronous speed and pm as it is the related to the rotor side output so it is related with the actual speed so this related to synchronous speed this relates with the actual speed that's why p2 is equal to torque into 2 pi ns by 60 and pm is equal to torque into 2 pi n by 60 if you will subtract these two you will get the pc and this is the equation and if you will take ratio of these uh, third and one first you will find that it is pc upon p2 it is equal to s and then again you can substitute this in this p2 minus pc is to uh, equal to pm pc you can substitute as s into p2 and you will get the third part of it and p2 s to pc s to pm is nothing but 1 is to s is to 1 minus s and you can take ratio of any of these two quantity and you will get the ratio of in terms of these quantities okay so you can divide uh, take uh, division of any of these two and similar division of these two quantities you have to take and you can relate these terms with each other okay so i hope uh, you have understood the things let us stop here for uh, today so thank you bye good day and take care okay